All right, so let's take a look at some basic organization of the autonomic nervous system. Now, before we can do that, we probably should review what we mean when we say autonomic. Autonomic is the stuff that you're not aware of. It's automatic. This is different than when we're talking about things you're aware of. So somatic is when you have stuff going directly to and from the brain. So here's our little brain. I'll make a little brain stem. And then let's just say spinal cord. Okay. With your somatic, you'll go directly from that brain to your target, or maybe directly from the spinal cord to your target. And in the case of somatic, so that's what I'm drawing on this side, you have one direct link to your effector, which is skeletal muscle. That's the only effector that you have. So these are conscious signals being sent to skeletal muscle to say, yep, lift your arm, rub your nose, hop on one foot. That's direct from the CNS to your target, your target's skeletal muscle. Autonomic nervous system, however, does a relay and it goes to different targets. So if we look at the autonomic nervous system, so the ANS, we'll have two divisions. And so let's do parasympathetic first. So parasympathetic is also known as your rest and digest. The parasympathetic is going to come off at the brain stem. It will go pretty far. It can also come off at the bottom. So it's also known as the cranial sacral division because it can all come from cranium brain, uh, for cranium forebrain. It's more brain stem because you're going to use uh, cranial nerve. And then it'll come off the sacrum. And they both will go a long way before relaying close to the targets. And the targets are different than what we saw over here. They're the targets that you can't consciously control. So over here, your effectors would be things like smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and glands. All stuff you can talk to and control, but you just can't do it consciously. So for example, if you wanted to move food from your stomach to your small intestines, you can't tell it to do it consciously. You can't in your head say, oh, I see a piece of cake over there and I already had carrots and I gotta move those carrots out so I can make room for the cake. It doesn't work. So we are going to have these ones as our unconscious effectors. Now I did say you're going to relay. So anytime you have a collection of somas out in the periphery, and I guess I'm gonna color code a little bit for us here. So let's put things in orange. That's kind of the same for everything. So everything ANS, same effectors, same basic setup in the fact that you're gonna have a cell that goes to an autonomic ganglia. So we have a gang of somas, so autonomic ganglia. The cell that goes to it is before the ganglia, so this would be a preganglionic neuron. And remember, these terms are gonna be the same, doesn't matter if you're talking sympathetic or parasympathetic. The cell after the ganglia, the one that comes from the ganglia, this is called a ganglionic. So a ganglionic neuron is close to the target if you're talking parasympathetic. The signal that gets released between the cell and the cell for both divisions, doesn't matter which one you're using, is going to be acetylcholine. So that's your neurotransmitter. So your neurotransmitter is acetylcholine that talks to the next cell, that ganglionic neuron. If you're using a parasympathetic signal, which I'm doing in yellow, so we'll keep this consistent, this is going to be acetylcholine going to your effectors off of that ganglionic neuron. There are some differences in what you're signaling and where you come off the spinal cord and how these first cells look between sympathetic and parasympathetic. So let's do a different color. Let's go with pink here for sympathetic. So we have ANS again, but now let's do sympathetic. Sympathetic is your fight or flight. The trick on that is if you see somebody in a fight or flight situation, you feel sympathetic for them. Like, oh, that bear's gonna eat you. 
run. So sympathetic is going to prepare your body for heightened levels of reactivity. So you're gonna feel your body getting warmer, you're gonna dilate your pupils so you can see more, so you can find something to defend yourself with or an escape route. You'll start kind of having the heartbeat faster, breathing quicker so you can get nutrients to the muscles so you can, again, run away, defend yourself. So sympathetic, if you're trying to get to those places where you can like, okay, I can respond. You're gonna like kind of in the background get ready to help the skeletal muscles. So you're gonna dilate the blood vessels that go in that direction. You're actually going to come off more kind of right in this core area because that's gonna get you closer to arms and legs than if you were coming off the head and then the sacrum. So here we call this the thoracolumbar region because you'll come off the thorax and you actually will have a bunch of branching because you can talk to cells up and down there's a whole bunch and this branches quickly because you're like, okay, everybody, stat, we're on alert. And so what'll happen is you'll come off the thoracic region and the lumbar region, you'll have a bunch of branching and your autonomic ganglia is really close to your spinal cord and far away from the target. So the first cell is really short and branchy. And then you have your autonomic ganglia and then you'll go to your targets. And again, your target's still smooth muscle cardiac and glands. That's why I did this thing in orange here to kind of show there are things that are similar. You're still releasing acetylcholine at that first cell. So it's still ACH here. You're still called a preganglionic neuron, ganglionic neuron. But the difference is really here. It's the signal that you let out. And so on this one, Instead of releasing acetylcholine to these targets, you're gonna release something that we call adrenaline or norepinephrine. And norepinephrine is gonna to go to those targets and they're going to do kind of the opposite of what acetylcholine causes. The cells, if you're releasing acetylcholine, are called cholinergic. If you release norepinephrine, you're called adrenergic, adrenaline cells. And so you're going to get, again, the opposite effect. If this is rest and digest, this is kind of speeding things up. But this is basic layout and some anatomy to kind of help organize and keep the two divisions kind of separate from each other. Once you know one, you really kind of know the other in the sense of the anatomy is opposite, their functions are opposite. Realistically, the only things that we're keeping similar are your effectors, the names of the cells, the name of where you relay, and then the signal that's released, the chemical message that's released from that first cell, that preganglionic neuron is the same. Everything else is just the opposite. Hopefully that was helpful to see it all mapped out. Thanks for watching.